then this guy Whitney Tilson pops up, who was one of my students with a strategy consulting background, but also a guy with a very deep history in social enterprise and working on uh, various uh, social issues. The advent of Whitney and this body of work really started the process which really led to this organization which is now thriving and has been in existence for more than a decade. One aspect of Whitney's background was not rare at all. He had worked at BCG. He was very well trained in, in, uh, in analysis and, and strategic thinking but, but he also had worked for Teach for America and it was very unusual to, uh, more so in those days than it is today, to see students that could really combine these backgrounds, you know, good hard-edged management knowledge, but also this, this real passion for dealing with social issues. It was unthinkable that Whitney would literally, upon graduation of HBS, help me start the ICIC. I mean, there was no money in it, there was no, it was the riskiest thing I can imagine. I mean, th this was a whole concept that was sort of an oxymoron, the competitive advantage of the inner city. I mean, this was like crazy. And yet, this young man was willing to take that on, to sacrifice income, and, and to make this happen. And, and he w really had a tremendous impact on this organization. That, that's a sign of the kind of person he is, the kind of determination he has, which has made him effective in many, many areas uh, in his subsequent career. I heard about Whitney Tilson's blog, which was this constant, constant source uh, of information and everybody knew about it, it, read it and followed it. So as a result of that, then I came to see what his positions were. We met on many occasions uh, thinking about how to strategize in Albany to get more charter schools. We were fighting a charter cap and talking issues of school reform, uh, issues about KIPP, is issues about uh, Teach for America. So I've seen Whitney over the course of the last uh, five, six years on uh, numerous, numerous occasions. But the thing about Whitney is he's utterly indefatigable and his blog is really a piece of work. Right before I came down here, uh, I got a big email blast uh, from him uh, this morning and I'm sure it's not the last one of the day. Are the other students about as well prepared? Are you guys definitely, you think you're better prepared? Uh, <laughs> All prepared for the exam because being with other students from other schools, you, you just notice your stance, like where you are now with a packet and how best you can answer questions when you have the test. We really felt smart, very smart, because <laughs> we, 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 we could answer like so many questions right. and we were, it was really good, we really liked it. So. He said, look, you know, we need to get more minorities ready for college. We need to stimulate real interest in high poverty neighborhoods. Let's use an innovative strategy in order to do that, which is fundamentally to create incentives, financial incentives, so that kids think, instead of having to go out and work, I can actually do some work on my AP courses. Now, one of the other things that we did notice as a result of the expansion of the Advanced Placement Program is our admissions to the Ivy Leagues and very competitive programs have increased because more of our students are taking two, three, four advanced placement courses. So when you're applying to a school like UPenn or Yale or Dartmouth or Princeton, the colleges are looking at that and they're making decisions on the fact that the students taking the most competitive courses that are offered at the school and the students have done well academically. Whitney made this happen. He brought the energy, he pulled together the Council for Urban Professionals, raised the money, and basically drove the process. And we had a lot of support from many other people, but this was Whitney's invention. He's a very busy individual. He takes time from his private enterprise to come up to Harlem to meet the students, to talk with the students, to encourage the students. So he's a hands-on kind of fellow. So Whitney Tilson has made a tremendous difference in the students' lives because it's not only someone donating money, but it's someone who's meeting the kids, talking to the kids, encouraging the kids, uh, going to the tutorials, sitting in the classes and asking questions. Uh, sometimes you think he's part of the instructional program or sometimes you think he's a teacher. He's right in there. Whitney is the great connector. Uh, he's, he's always looking out for ways in which to expand uh, the network of friends of KIPP and people who are willing to help our kids, uh, it's really fantastic. There are two things when I think of Whitney. I mean, one, I think Whitney is truly uh, one of the, has the generosity of spirit that is unique. And so he's constantly looking for ways to help the kids, to help the program. Uh, he's constantly looking to, to bring in more people, more resources, ultimately connecting. And then he just has a boundless uh, zest 
energy and enthusiasm, uh, and it's 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 uh, it's really remarkable. Uh, Whitney and I uh, talk uh, regularly on, on many different topics. He's now built a very successful uh, investment management uh, organization and uh, he's become a noted writer in the, in the financial space, uh, uh, all of which uh, I'm very proud of. I take a little credit for uh, pushing him on his writing and kind of encourage him in, in, that, in that direction, but uh, he's been extraordinarily successful in the for-profit world, but he continues to be actively involved in any number of social issues, whether it's uh, healthcare related issues or education related issues. And with each of them, he brings a tremendous kind of grit and determination and doggedness. He's the, he has the best Rolodex, I guess nobody has Rolodex anymore, but he, he has a virtual Rolodex now that's second to none. He keeps in touch. He's great at nudging people along, getting things to happen. I think the story is, is, is yet to be written. I, I have a feeling that it's going to have both a business dimension, but it's also going to have a social dimension. And uh, I think he, I could see him ending up building his uh, business career, but I, I'd be very surprised if at some point in the next 20 years he doesn't essentially put that aside and, and, and re-engage full-time in, in something that benefits the community, and, and hopefully I can be part of it.